Um, this is the third spin-off event for us for the, the TMFI and um, Fidel's inspiration, um, but also um, thanks to Karen, Vanya and Shinidu and Fidel for putting this together and the collaboration with TFMI. Um, important always to thank the funders, so the German Marshall Fund um, and the Robert Bosch Foundation. Um, welcome to uh, Brian from Atlantic and also to Dublin City Council who are partnering the event for us uh, again today. See, I thought, okay, you know, we have, you know, we have been organising things, but we don't get a chance to sit down with various interests and then try to agree or disagree, at least identify what the issues are and so forth. So then I said, okay, but why don't we try something new? So what I was hoping was to bring people who represent different interests in a room, plus international experience, talk about migration in sort of, uh, you know, removing the hearts of the various organizations and institutions we represent, because we are normally sometimes prisoners of what we do. So if you are working in migration, that's what you do. You are in integration, that's what you do. Asylum, economic migration, and so forth. So I'm hoping today we have some space and we can talk. And especially this aspect of rethinking our arguments when building uh, a, m a migration policy, we are now in a new situation. Europe is not Europe from five years ago. I'm asking the following questions. Are there any grounds for such a trend, a return to the country of origin of the highly qualified? Could we talk about reverse brain drain? What is the motivation of the ones who return? Are they only being pragmatic? Or do they also aim to contribute to the development of their society and their country of origin? So uh, basically this was really a very intensive learning for me today uh, to track what are really the most important uh, and uh, vulnerable points of the migration policy here. And today I spoke on uh, media representation, the portrayal of immigrants in Irish media. Some of the problems when it comes to such reporting is that uh, they hype stereotypes. I, I, imagine, you know, a, a program talking about immigrants and then instead of having immigrants on board, you have an Irish person to speak on behalf of immigrants. I don't think it's right. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that Irish people should not speak on behalf of immigrants, but there is also a need for immigrants to be given a voice. Today I, uh, I presented a paper that really looked at or really rather asked the question of what is the continuing role of race as a motivating force in U.S. immigration policies and politics. What's motivating the laws? Why are states passing this? And I argue that states are doing this because of a growing discomfort in the United States with changing racial dynamics. Um, you know, mainly because I think for all of us, um, the work that we engage in is, is difficult, is uh, stressful, is slow to see change, and it's really important when we can to, to take a moment to step back, to kind of step out of the political landscape that we find ourselves in. Um, you get very stuck into the same set of problems and potential answers. Um, and it's really refreshing actually to, to think, to challenge yourself to try to think harder in this case about what's happening in Ireland and across Europe in terms of immigration policy and how it might uh, resonate with what's happening in the United States.